He says, happy Sabbath, Tina. I have a question. What should be our view on money? Should we treat money like a neutral position? You know what? That's actually a really great question, Robert. I appreciate that. And the Bible actually has a lot of really important things to say when it comes to money. And, you know, I'm going to, what I want to start though with is a verse that people tend to use and they misuse the verse. And so I think because they misuse the verse, they misuse the money. And so I want to go ahead and go with, um, go with me to the Bible. Um, excuse me. In the book of first Timothy chapter six, verse 10. Now, again, this is a really famous verse and a lot of people try to use this to explain certain things or I want to say make excuses or, you know, things like that. And I think it's so sad because I, and I think a lot of people, you know, misunderstand it as Christians. And so because of it, they, they don't understand money and its purpose and they, think of money as something evil when money in itself is not something evil. So again, first Timothy chapter six and verse 10 says for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now it's very important to understand all of the verses <laughs> as we're, we're reading through it. It, a lot of people say, uh, money, they leave out the first three words in that verse. They just say, or the first four, they just say money is the root of all evil. And they take away some of the words in the verse. And you have to understand that that is detrimental to any portion of scripture is when you cut and paste things that, you know, are supposed to stay together or they're, you know, they're taken out of context. This is so very important to understand that money is not the root of all evil. However, the love of money is the root of all evil or all kinds of evil. And because so many people covet after, and I think that's where you have to read all of the verse as well to understand, like, what does it mean, the love of money? It says, well, some coveted. What does it mean to covet? We know from the 10th commandment, it is a sin to covet. It's where you are desiring something that is not yours. It's something that, you know, belongs to somebody else and you're selfishly you know, seeking to take from other people what is rightfully theirs. And you are discontented with your portion in life. You're discontented with what you have. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't strive for better things or work hard. No, not at all. The Bible is very clear that you should strive to do your best and to make the most out of your opportunities. However, you should never in your heart um, have a desire for selfish things. You should never have a desire to basically take from others what is theirs, but rather seek God and see what God has for you and work hard in your life to do whatever, uh, you know, what God is calling you to do to be successful in an ethical and a, you know, a loving, <laughs> kind, healthy way. So again, you know, the love of money is what is the root of all evil, not money itself. And so I really appreciate that you're saying, you know, should we, uh, should we treat money like a neutral position? And I would say, yes. Um, I actually went to a Christian um, financial seminar many years ago, and I can't help but, you know, repeat what this um, speaker said, because it was so profound to me when I heard it. And he was saying how money, you know, is amoral. Like there's things that are moral, like, you know, you know, things that pertain to morality. And he's like, but, you know, money in and of itself, he's like the love of money Yes, that's a moral issue. That's, you know, where, you know, are you jealous? Are you willing to hurt people to get it? You know, that's a morality issue. However, money itself is amoral. It's not, money is not moral. It's just like a brick. And he was describing how, you know, if you have a brick, you can use that brick to do harmful things. You can use that brick to smash a window. You know, there's many hurtful things you can do with a brick. However, if you put it in the hands of, you know, God or, you know, a godly person, they can then use that brick to build a school. They can use that brick to build a house or a church or something positive, right? So I feel like that's also really the attitude we have to take when it comes to money as well, because if we're thinking, oh no, money is bad. We need to get rid of it. 
and we're, you know, God's people are depleted of funds, that's not a good situation. And we see so many people in the Bible, like Nicodemus, who actually funded the gospel in the early church because they took the money that God had given them and they used it appropriately to the furthering of the gospel. Now, there are so many, um, you know, ministries out there that are I've actually gone to the other extreme, which is also totally unbiblical and unhealthy as well, which is, you know, God just wants to, this prosperity gospel where, you know, all the, you know, all they talk about, you know, in the Bible is money. And that's also a really unhealthy route to go down. Um, because, you know, again, it's the focus should not be on money. The focus should be on God and allowing God to appropriate your money wisely. Now, just really quick, one more verse I'm going to share, and then I see um, another question. So I just want to share something really important that Jesus shared. Um, where he's Jesus is talking about um, who is your master? Who do you serve? And in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, Jesus says something really interesting. He says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he should hold to the one and despise the other. He says, you cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon is basically, in another sense, uh, you know, money. And so you cannot serve God and serve money as your God, because you're going to choose one or the other in the end. And so, because at the end of the day, you know, there are things that are related to the Bible with money in regard to worship, like paying your tithe. And so, so many people have, you know, erred in the faith because they're like, oh, I'm a good person. I go to church. I do all these things, but they're not willing to part with a tenth of their income, which God has commanded very, very clearly in the Bible that we're supposed to pay. And, you know, as far as, you know, where you, where that goes, what is, you know, the Bible says, um, has, can a man rob God? He says, how have you robbed me in tithes and in offerings? And so, um, again, that's Malachi chapter three, verse eight. He says, will a man rob God? If you rob me um, in tithes and offerings. And then in verse nine, it says, you're, uh, excuse me, talking about the, you know being cursed. And he says, you know, in verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, says the Lord, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So God, along with that um, you know command to give tithe also promises a blessing. And it's not, I'm giving tithe so that I get a blessing. I'm giving tithe because I love God and I trust God. And I trust that he's going to provide and give me the blessing he knows is best for my life. And it's just kind of a beautiful thing because it really puts the relationship between you and God in this area of finances. Um, just like you need to put God first in every area of your life, whether it be relationships, you know, your education, your work, you know, whatever it is, God should be first and foremost in that um, part of your life. Mm -hmm.